Another uh, very important aspect, of course, is uh, possibility for pedestrians to move around. And uh, therefore, Kastuti Zaletskis from Lithuania is going to share uh, his uh, uh, findings on comparison of walkability of in Vilnius, Kaunas, Malmo, and Riga as a premise for carbon free movement. So please, Kastutis, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Mm, I'm just starting sharing my screen. Yeah, so um, I, I am an urban planner and uh, not a specialist of, of transport development uh, or environmental engineering, but uh, yeah, and I would like to, to look on this uh, carbon neutral or carbon free mobility from uh, one of the possible urban perspectives and, and in this way to demonstrate the complexity of this problem and, and, and complexity of possible approaches. Yeah, as was mentioned, uh, it's comparison of uh, initially it was planned five cities, but uh, because uh, uh, the announcement of, of, of all this topic was made one month ago, so and uh, my experiment is going on, so some more cities were added, thus making a little more 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 interesting. Uh, of course, behind the list of the cities, Vilnius, Kaunas, Malmo, Riga, Tallinn, Gdansk, uh, Bialystok. Maybe there is not a very strict logic at the moment. It's just cities which, which, which uh, me and my colleagues know at least a little. Uh, of course, data was available, and in any case, that's something that was interesting uh, to compare from our region. Okay, so let's see importance of walkability. If you uh, speak about this carbon neutral movement from urban point of view, we can as well find a lot of perspectives, but uh, maybe the most simple one is to make our cities more attractive for walking. That's uh, maybe the way the idea which walked for hundreds of thousands of years and, and yeah, people are willing to do it. So walkability has a lot of, of what's positive social and, and cultural uh, benefits and uh, even if you look uh, quite strictly on on on, on so two emissions uh, there is a small data from project drawdown uh, uh, kind of non-governmental organization initiative uh, which demonstrates how walkability as one of the possible actions they model different scenarios Mm, or which can affect uh, the CO2 emissions in the future, depending on, on, on temperature rising, which is planned. So walkability, uh, public transit, public uh, oriented transport is as well related to walkability, bicycle infrastructure. Now we can see that, uh, or even carpooling, which could be related to walkability, because let's see, if you have some kind of, of, of pool of the cars, then some areas around should be walkable quite well. Mm, so this effect could be quite significant. Yeah, next question is, do we have a um, corresponding urban concepts? Of course, uh, very briefly, we have uh, quite recently, 2020, in Paris announced 15 minutes city concept, which again is not uh, in essence new, but let's see, maybe it, it receives some kind of new political, uh, new political context or, or, or Mm, and uh, yeah, it is very simple that city becomes more attractive for, for, for pedestrians if majority of the destinations become reachable within 15 minutes walk. So it's in more or less, uh, it's uh, within one kilometer, let's say. So it's, it's a very simple idea. Of course, uh, next step is, uh, again, if you want to model, if you want to be more precise, it's not enough to have just nice ideas, but we should be able to calculate, to measure, to model, to predict, and so on and so on. So next question, what is vulnerability in, in exactly? What it means in, in terms of urban planning? And uh, we can see here a lot of possible indicators, aspects, starting from street connectivity, land use mix, residential density, and so on and so on up to more than 10 indicators. In some cases, maybe some of them are, could be seen as more subjective as for example, urban design, various aspects. Some could be measured, quant, counted and so on and so on. Mm, uh, but yeah, idea, let's say of this walkable city or 15 minute city, we can see here illustration made on Washington, kind of not human friendly, not walkable friendly city, monocentric city on the top and uh, city made of smaller neighborhoods, which again has very important uh, social 
how to say, significance or, or meaning is important in social terms, creation of local neighborhoods, and so on and so on, in terms of new urbanism and, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, again, the, some very small analysis of case of cases of walkability modeling, uh, just four cases presented here. Maybe I will start from second set and, and the fourth. Uh, yeah, so not all, not then, or not more indicators are used, but uh, we have population density, we have network connectivity as a number of intersections of, of, of density of intersections, which could be me me measured quite easily, let's say, in, in using JS technologies and so on, so on. Land use mix, uh, proximity of destinations, in some cases, entropy as well as this kind of, of proximity of destinations just may be approached from a little different mathematical perspectives and so on and so on, but maybe one uh, very interesting for me is the uh, uh, case of the United Kingdom, Prince Albert uh, Foundation idea of index of walkability, which is implemented model the scale of all country. And it's based on very simple, say proximity of destinations and, and this proximity is modeled in the mathematical network using graph methods, space index. So this graph method, which describes a mathematical way a network of the streets, or network of the buildings as well, and allows to model more movement of the people, uh, points of attraction, and things like that. So, yeah, as well as possible, in some cases, uh, social sociological survey is, is, is involved and, and things like that. So, uh, on base of, of this review, uh, our own proposal for analysis, a model which we de decided to use, was based on, on four um, indicators. First, of course, inhabitant density as a very clear, uh, clear and, and, and uh, quantitative indicator, presence of people. People should be there, otherwise no one is walking. Another thing is reach, uh, reach of, of, of the perimeter of the buildings. Because according to Christopher Alexander, according to different studies by Jan Gell or, or World Bank, uh, that uh, streets where we have more contact between the building, facade and, and, and street space, become more attractive for people to walk. Uh, sad aspect is straighters. So it means people, again, they tend to move in the shortest uh, possible distance in majority of cases. And, and if it's prolonged very much, again, this network of streets becomes uh, not so attractive for walking. And of course, uh, number of reachable destinations are gravity. So in all, in all cases, we used a mathematical graph or space syntax model for calculation of these indexes. And of course, uh, last thing that all indicators were normalized. So we obtained possibility to compare different cities. Okay, so uh, as well, our data collection of data indicators is related to open data, which we were able, which we can get. So this is set is for corners, but identical set was collected for every city. We have street network, we have buildings network, with some functionalities available in open street maps. We have so-called points of interest or points, uh, shops, schools, and so on and so on. So a lot of information uh, on, on, on functionalities and uh, public transport uh, system with public transport stops and things like that. And of course, density of inhabitants. So all, all this data was used in the modeling. Uh, steps of modeling of, of walkability. Maybe I will not stop. stop will not stop uh, for long here. Just uh, it means preparation of the data. A very important point is validation of it. Is this graph model working or not? Because you know we can imagine a lot of, of models and concepts which, but they are not valid. And finally, um, calculation of these indexes or centralities, let's say, and and analysis of the results and modeling comparison of walkability. Okay, so here we have this. Uh, seven cities, Kona, Smal, Moriga, Gdansk, or Trujmas, or three cities, Italian, Vilnius, Bevestok. Um, how these space index maps or, or network looks, where color means different types of centrality. For example, in this case, it means the density and transit, uh, more intensive in this case, red color, but it could mean a lot of different things. And validation of the model, here we have correlation between density of these points of interest as shop schools and, 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 and yeah, different uh, types of objects and different syntactic indicators. Uh, practically all correlations are significant, a quite high level 0 0.01. Uh, green color means strong correlations, uh, sorry, yellow color means strong, green means uh, moderate. So models are working, they are using them. 
And uh, next step, uh, we have all these, let's say, four indicators as uh, proximity of gravity, uh, mm, straightness, reach, and population. And in, again, we have these maps for every city. Uh, mm, again, we can analyze every spot. We can identify, uh, let's see, if any new shop or any new object will appear in a certain place, how it will change uh, vocability, this uh, proximity, or, or if new type of urban form will appear, it will affect, let's say, perimeter of the buildings and so on and so on. But as well, what was the most interesting for us to see how these four layers, what synergies they create. Synergies between urban form, so straightness and reach, synergy between proximity or, or gravity, and synergy between uh, allocation of people. And in case of Konas, the synergies are quite weak. In case of Malmo, the synergies are quite good. And again, we can, can go deeper into to, to more details, but let's say general picture like that as, as well. And for example, in case of corners, we have a lot of blue color here. It means that uh, allocation of these possible destinations is, is quite scattered. We have a big, huge territories where just few possible destinations of walking are available. Well, in case of Malmo, we have very little of this blue. So um, practically in every spot, in many spots, a lot of proximity is quite good. And again, we have Riga. Uh, this again, we can see correlations. Uh, in this case, PESA correlation was, was calculated between reach and straightness as uh, indicators of urban form, attractiveness, focability, and proximity and destinations. Uh, yeah, we have Tallinn, we have Vilnius, um, we have Bellystock, uh, we have Trumimasto, or yeah, Dansk, Sopot, Gdina. Uh, but, you know, of course, uh, as I said, these pictures are, could look quite interesting for, for deep analysis, but if you want to compare, uh, so we applied uh, process normalization. Uh, it means we uh, unified the scales while dividing, dividing the, the, this uh, uh, indicators. And uh, finally, we created a kind of compass of vocability. Uh, here on the six corners, we have, let's say, correlations between proximity and, and perimeter, so proximity and, and urban form, proximity and pollution, and so on and so on. And it was the most interesting that, you know, Malmo, as, as we expected, as city-oriented quite much to, to transit-oriented development, pedestrian walking situations quite good, and, and this compass is, is quite even, relatively quite even spread in, in all directions as well. Similar situation is, is with Riga. While in some cases, as Kona Svirnis, you can see we have very, um, how to say, deformed compass, and, and, and we can identify quite easily the weak spots, what uh, urban planners should address more, and, 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 and what could be changed, maybe in which direction, which are the most, how to say, problematic spots. Again, in this case, even if you know transferring uh, knowledge from one experience from one to another one, we can. Uh, compare these indicators one by one and can see what is uh, this uh, proximity, um, what is reachability and, and uh, straightness and population density uh, in different cities. Just in this case, we should not compare these columns within one city. We just should compare columns on the same color between the cities. So again, you know, we can compare the situations and, 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 and create different strategies and, and so on and so on. Finally, even for urban planning, you know, we can focus, as I said, on, on single building or, or, how, or how different new development will affect walkability in this neighborhood. But as well, uh, we can create city level strategies. Here is a cluster analysis of, of this walkability for indicators by using three clusters, two step cluster analysis. And, and it was interesting to see that, you know, in different cities, for example, in Kaunas, modernistic housing blocks they practically appear in the lowest and, 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 and second from the bottom uh, cluster, while in, in Malmo, even, uh, even in these modernistic blocks appear in, in, in practically in second, in orange cluster. So it could be related to urban morphology, morphotypes, and, and so on and so on. Yeah, and uh, because time is, is running out, uh, so in conclusion, um, yeah, idea is that, you know, while using this open data, uh, we can quite well model in quantitative way vocability. We can compare, we can create strategies, and we can, can use these models and, and at different levels, different hierarchical levels. 
from single building, from landlord, from neighborhood to, to all city or even region. Because I was very much impressed by this UK case, which is, let's say, more simple and, in my opinion, not so complex as we proposed, but still it covers all country. And uh, yeah, so just in this case, just a matter of, of power of, 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 of uh, computers. And of course, you know, further development is, is, is possible because we had four, four, um, four months for indicators, but again, for example, based on logical survey of situation, maybe some four months could be more important than others. Again, it could be added by add additional weighting, by raising by DD, or, you know, in mathematical formula is not obviously it's possible. Um, so in this case, it's possible. So local context could be addressed even more precisely. And, 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 and most important, it allows to predict you know, because uh, in urban planning, uh, they can have a lot of new, nice ideas, but question is if, if they will work. And and with these models, it's quite high probability, let's say, you can say that it's most probable that uh, this decision will have this effect on mobility, positive or negative, and so on and so on. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Kastutis, for a very interesting presentation. But I have to say the same thing as for our previous speakers. Due to the time, uh, strengths on time, I think uh, we will go at this point without any questions and uh, let's bring the discussions uh, further on when we have the time for it. So uh, let's uh, thank you once again and uh, let's move forward to our next speaker.